laughing, the evil duke pulls a lever and a thick mithril door slams down. Bolts thud, sealing you into the room. Aw oh, damn, he's got the amulet. We gotta stop him before he can use it and resurrect that lich. If that thing is solid mithril, then there is no way we can get through it in time. So what do we do? Pizza guy's here. Tell you what, I'll go ahead and take care of him and you guys start figuring out a plan on how to get out of this room. Hmm. What you doing over there? Some idiot on the Starfleet board just said that Kirk is better than Picard, so I am telling him that he is a dumbass. He's right, Kirk was better. Blasphemer, why would you say that? I can because it's true. Picard was a much better captain than Kirk was. Kirk just banged a bunch of alien babes and ripped his shirt off every chance that he got. I'm not judging him on his kinks, but as a captain, he was better. How? You want the dumb answer or the real answer? Hmm, I don't know. Todd, what do you think? It's a dumb debate, so just go with the dumb one. Hey, could I see your spells for the day? Okay, so to really compare them, the only real test is to put them in the exact same situation and rate their performance versus each other. And there is one incident where they were put in the exact same situation. Season 1, Episode 4, The Naked Time. There, the crew encounters a group of dead and frozen scientists near a gravitational anomaly, but the away team gets infected with some sort of substance that makes them super drunk. That's the one where Thulu runs around with a fencing sword. That's the one. Anyway, some drunk jerk takes over engineering and disables the ship, and the crew has to get out of there before they get killed by this planet imploding. Kirk gets infected too, but his love and his duty toward the ship is so strong that he's able to fight through it. By then, Bones has managed to get an antidote for them, and Scotty has gotten into engineering, but they still don't have time to escape it in time, so Kirk orders them to do a theoretical maneuver that not only saves the day, but invents time travel. They were always traveling in time. Yeah, and Picard was always getting locked in his own holodeck. Hey dude, what equipment do you have? Uh, here you go. Anyway, fast forward, Next Generation Episode 2, The Naked Now. There, the Enterprise finds some dead and frozen scientists outside of a gravitational anomaly. And again, they get infected and everybody gets super drunk. That's the one where Data and Tashi Yar did it. Yup, Tashi Yar was so hot. Dude, why does your cleric have a scroll of wizard spells? Those? I think I was planning on selling them or something like that. I honestly forgot that I had them. Anyway, Riker recognizes the story from the archive reports of the Enterprise's earlier mission, because Riker's the kind of guy that would read the history of the ship that he's on. He finds this story and he tells Picard all about it. Picard tells Dr. Crusher to make the formula that Bones had invented, but had he bothered to read the entire report, he would have put somebody in engineering because, again, some drunk idiot took over engineering and disabled the ship, this time being Wesley Crusher. Oh, I hated Wesley Crusher. Picard gets infected too, and he manages to resist Dr. Crusher's advancements, and then he proceeds to drunk giggle throughout the rest of the episode. Hey Mike, how do I calculate the surface area of a sphere? What? How would I know that? Look it up. Anyway, they make the cure and they manage to get into engineering, but they still don't have time to escape this exploding sun. But Wesley Crusher saves the day and they all manage to live. So both captains are put in the exact same situation. One saves the day in under an hour and also invents time travel. The other is given the notes on how to complete this entire mission, but he still doesn't learn from Kirk's mistakes and the same mistakes end up happening. And the only reason that Picard lived is because a drunk kid saved his ass. So, Kirk wins. You're right, that is a dumb answer. Picard was just a better captain. You'd have a much better chance of surviving under him. That's true, Picard was a diplomat and he was probably a lot more fun to serve under as well. They had very different strengths than one another and Kirk was out on the frontier and he was also just a much better leader. No he wasn't. Sorry it was, but here's the real answer. To rate a leader, you should look at who they surround themselves with. Kirk's most trusted advisors were Spock and Bones. Spock viewed everything through the eyes of pure logic, while Dr. McCoy looked at everything through the eyes of morality. When Kirk faced a tough decision, he would look to his seconds, who gave him very different takes on how he should approach it. And then it was up to Kirk to weigh between his two seconds, logic versus morality, and if possible, find a solution that could satisfy both. Picard, meanwhile, surrounded himself with yes-men. There was very little conflict among his crew because everybody looked at everything through the same spectacles that he did. But a truly good leader should surround themselves with people who disagree and have conflicting opinions. And then that leader should be able to weigh the differences between them. And that is why Kirk is better. Yeah, I'm still not buying it. Todd, what do you think? Who is your favorite Starfleet captain? What? Oh, um, Cisco. Oh, I forgot about Cisco. 
Yeah, Cisco was pretty awesome. He might have us there. Except, Cisco was a station commander. He wasn't a ship's captain. So it's not really a fair comparison to use him. Hey guys, pizza's ready. So, you come up with a way to get out of this room yet? Um, well, uh... We're still working on it. Yes. Now, first question, though. The description for Wall of Force states that it can be curved into a hemispherical or spherical shape. So can that be like a sphere with a hole on one end of it? Um, sure. Okay, now a fireball has a radius of 20 feet and a volume of 33,000 cubic feet. Dude, this room isn't big enough to cast fireball without burning ourselves up. That's true. This room only has a volume of 14,000 cubic feet. And Dweeble's wall isn't big enough in order to seal off one half of the room to protect us from the fire. So my idea is that he casts a sphere of force here. And at his level, the surface area that he can do is 180 square feet, or a sphere with a diameter just above 7 feet. Now that sphere is going to have a hole in one side that's going to be about 2 feet in size. And it's going to be pressed up against that mithril door. But before Dweebles casts it, he's going to use Mike's 14th level spell scroll of Delayed Blast Fireball, and he's going to trap that fireball with inside the sphere. So when it goes off, it's going to direct all that heat and force directly through its only exit and straight into that door, maybe melting or blasting a hole straight through it. At level 14, that is 14 d6 plus 14 damage. Would that work? Oh, uh, wow. Sure, that should, I mean... Why don't we try it and let you guys find out? Damn, we are geniuses. Awesome, but my character doesn't want to do it. Are you kidding me? Why not? Well, Grinshard is a barbarian and mistrusting of all magic. So you're going to have to convince him that this is the only way. You want to roleplay this out now? The evil duke is getting away and we only got one plan to get out of here. Dude, let me have this. <sighs> Fine, we'll roleplay it. Sweet, then I'm going to grab some pizza. He is always wasting our game time. Hey Seth, this is just a random question, but um, who's your favorite starship captain? Oh, um, Adama. No, I was talking about Star Trek. Hold on. Lauren Green or Edward James Omos? Totally Edward James Omos. Yeah, Husker was pretty awesome. And Starbuck was hot. You ever notice that Starbuck and Tasha Yar were a lot alike? Tough, short blonde hair, had a thing for banging androids. They both even died and came back for a bit. Yeah, they're practically the same person. Well, this has happened before and it'll happen again. Now, go grab some pizza and let's get to convincing Todd how awesome your plan is. So say we all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews and how to's, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, stay awesome. I still say that Cisco was the best.